Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Brook Trout Homestead. Today, you may be wondering why I'm inside. Well, that's because I'm going to take you through the process of installing a cast iron stove in our living room. Some of you may be wondering why a cast iron stove. This past year, we went through that huge freeze that we had here in Texas. Um, so it shows that you can have heat in your home without being dependent upon electricity. So it's more of a off-grid heating system uh, for your home. Well, I'm going to take you through the process of how we're going to install it. This right here is the wall that we're going to put it on. It's centrally located in our home. This is seriously the center of our house, uh, this living room wall. There's a room behind here. Um, so it's directly middle of our home. So it's great for the heat. It's going to be able to disperse the heat throughout the house. Uh, back behind me on this way is the bedrooms. That side is the kitchen and the dining room and also a bedroom. So it's really well centrally located. So I'm going to show you kind of what I'm doing and the process behind all that. So the first thing you want to do is find the wall that you want to do it on. So as finding the proper location, you have to remember your, your vent or your heat stack um, or your smoke stack is going to go through the roof or through your ceiling and through the roof. So you've got to really pay attention to that because you've got to between, be between the joists of your ceiling in order to go up through without hitting those joists. This is the wall that we're gonna install it on. Like I said, I found center of the wall. And then from the center, I came over and found my studs. Uh, luckily, my studs are four foot apart, the ones I'm gonna go. So I'm marking on the wall now uh, where one stud is, and then I'm gonna go four foot over and put another mark on the wall so I can cut the sheetrock out. Here's my mark uh, for my stud. It goes all the way up from ceiling to floor. I'm gonna come four foot off of this one over to my next mark where I'm gonna put my stud at and put a line there as well. So it's important to use, um, I got a four foot level that I use uh, to mark my stud so I know where it's at. It's important to get that level all the way down Now that I got both lines marked, I'm gonna cut that section out. And you may be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, in order to install a wood burning stove, it has to be fire retardant or fire resistant. So I'm taking the sheetrock out and I've got some um, concrete board or cement board that I'm gonna put up here, some hardy board they call it. Um, and I'm gonna put that up in place of the sheetrock. That way it's a, a barrier between the heat and the actual wall. You have to have the hardy board um, behind it in order to repel that heat from catching fire behind it. Now I'm just gonna take uh, my Sawzall and I'm pretty much just gonna cut straight down this line, which uh, should be on a stud. So I'm gonna cut all the way down this line so that way I can take this sheetrock out um, and I'm gonna do the same on the other line. And I use a sawzall to cut my line all the way down. If you have a keyhole saw or a sheetrock saw, it works too. Of course, it takes a lot more work because you're like doing it by hand. But if you're not confident with the sawzall and know how to use it, these right here are great little tools. Um, I would suggest picking one of these up. You never know when you might need it. Okay, so as you can tell, I got all the sheetrock off of it now. Um, from stud to stud, like I said, it's four foot. Um, it's eight foot from top to bottom. So I ended up buying three sheets, uh, three foot by five foot, a uh, quarter inch uh, cement or uh, yeah, cement board. So that's what I'm putting on now. That's what I'm installing now. I'm having to cut them uh, to size, of course, but that's what I'm working with. Um, if you do buy, if you do buy the cement boards, you have to buy the specific um, screws to go with them. Uh, to put them on there so uh, don't you know buy this as well it's easy it's right there normally right next to the cement board there at home depot or lowe's or wherever you get your stuff from um, again it's important to do this that way you are insulating and fire blocking uh your 
your boards and everything in the wall. So I'm going to start putting that on and I'll show you uh, kind of how I do that uh, here in a little bit. All right, so this is the cement backer that I'm putting on now. Um, it's fairly simple to put on, like I said, if you have those proper screws. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and, and tack this one on. I already did a, a bottom one here that you can't really see in the, in the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on here with the screws and everything. And then I have one more piece to cut. And that'll be pretty much all that I'm going to be able to do today with the material that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put that on real quick. Just a quick tip, something I did not do. Um, if you want to where your studs are, uh, you can measure it out and, and draw lines down the stud. So that way you know exactly where your studs are so you're not missing your screws. Um, I, know, I don't do that because I like to just guess. Um, I miss sometimes and I just go to another hole and put it in. So just a quick tip for you. Um, it's easier to do it that way so you know for a fact you're on your stud the whole time you're going down putting in screws. All right, so I got my final piece on. I'm about to just screw this one up. Um, and this is where, like I was talking about, marking the, the stud, or yeah, marking your stud location would be very beneficial. Because as you can tell, you can't see where the studs are in this wall. So it'd be very beneficial to do that. So me, I'm just going to have to find my hole, and I'm just going to have to guess and hope and pray. Lord Jesus, let me hit the stud. And God bless me with that. So I'm going to continue to screw these in real quick. cement board that I put up again I got the three foot by five foot by quarter inch um, and the reason why I did quarter inch is by the time you come here and put your mortar um, on here and then put the brick it should be pretty well flush with the sheetrock because the sheetrock is uh, half inch so I went with quarter inch that way I can mud it put the brick on it and make that transition nice and smooth um, coming on the sheetrock um, so this is this part of it now um, and now I'm going to show you how to put the mortar on it and to place the bricks on it and we'll go from there. If you see my shirt change, it's because I had to do it a different day. I didn't have the supplies today. So let's just fast forward in a time real quick and you'll see me mortaring it and so getting now it. Now I have all the material that I need, uh, to put the brick on the wall. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of the products that I have that I'm going to be using, um, for this real quick. So this is the brick that we're going to be using. Um, it's called Brick Web from Old Castle Brick, Thin Brick Sheets. Um, I got it from Home Depot. They came in, I believe, six to a pack. Um, so that's what we're going to be using uh, to put on the wall right here. Um, and of course, good old Home Depot bucket with the trowel and everything. Got the VersaBond custom uh, mortar to go on the wall gray that way it kind of blends in better and then I also have type s mason mix there and that's going to go in the cracks of the brick um, to fill it in to fill in these cracks as you can see um, the reason why I got these is because they seemed a lot better than actual tile um, that's why we got these um, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through the process of what I'm going to do now. All right, so I just mixed up the mortar, uh, with water. Um, I don't really measure too much. I just put enough water in there, add mortar, mix it, and then I make it the consistency that I want. Um, I mixed it for five minutes and you're looking for a pretty good consistency with your mortar. I don't know if you can see that. I may bring it a little bit closer. 
Now with the mortar, you're going to want that nice consistency of it. You see how it's like kind of sticky, sloppy almost. Um, again, I mixed it for like five minutes to get it to that consistency. Um, that's what the, the bag recommended. So after you mix it and you get that consistency, uh, you got to let it sit for another five to ten minutes. Um, and once you let that sit, uh, it's going to help solidify that mortar mix a little bit more. Um, and then once it sits that much, you take it and you're going to mix it again. Um, so I'm going to mix it here in a little bit again. And then once that final mix happens, that's when you're able to start applying it onto your wall. Um, so I'm going to give it about 10 minutes. Um, that good old time warp on video, right? And then you're going to, I want to start going through the process of how to apply it to the wall and how to get your brick laid out and, and things like that. Actually, I'm going to show you the brick layout now while that's waiting. So like I said, I got this wall is four foot by eight foot tall. Um, the brick that I got when I lay them side by side, it's about four foot four. I think it's like a half a brick too long. Um, so what I did was break the brick off of the end over there that I don't need. The brick pieces that I got, um, they come in these little web sheets. So you got the webbing behind it. Um, you can tell. So that's where the mortar goes and it holds it onto the wall better. Um, so these brick pieces, as you can tell, they're full pieces. Uh, these weren't here. I just put those. Uh, they're full pieces. This is a full piece here. Um, so basically, you just key them in, you know, where the web pieces are. You just set them just like that. I'll give you a better example once I start getting on the wall. But that's pretty much how you piece them together. They just fit in just like that. Now, this end is my end piece here. Uh, and these, this brick and this brick were actually these two pieces. Uh, they stuck on there out towards, so it was too long. So all I did was I broke these off with a hammer um, to make this the length that I want. So once I broke those bricks off, it would fit perfectly in my four foot section here. Um, so I don't have to do too much work, thank the Lord. Um, so I'll be able to fit that into my four foot section exactly how I want it and be able to go from that. Once you get it all mixed up and stuff, you can start applying it to your wall. Um, now what you want to do is you want to try to apply from top down. Uh, that way you can bring it all the way down. You can do your cuts at the bottom uh, once you get most of it put on the wall. Um, and now I'm going to just start applying the mortar to the wall. So the trowel I'm using is a quarter inch by quarter inch. Uh, so when you try to get it on there the best you can, you just come and scrape it at a scrape it at an angle to try to get that nice consistency all the way across. Is that that's the key to getting the brick to stay is when you have a nice consistency of the thickness all the way across that way that mortar can set in there really well. Just like that now I'm going to continue it on um, and then I'll show you when I put the first piece of brick on there
once you get the mud on the wall like you want, like it is here, I've only covered about half the wall right now because I want to do that top half and then go down and work on the bottom half. Um, so I'm going to start laying my brick, like I said, from the top corner this way and down. So I'm working my way down through the brick and being able to do what I need to with it. Now, as you're applying it, I've noticed that you need to make sure you put pressure on it. That way that mortar that you put on there becomes to stick out through the matting. Um, that way you know for a fact it's actually stuck to the wall and you've got enough. Um, if you don't see it coming through the web netting that's here, you can always put more on it, apply more, make it a little thicker, or you can do what they call back butter. Back butter is pretty much you just take the back of the tile, put mortar on it and then stick it together. That way it fills in the gaps and there's no loose um, matting or anything behind the bricks. So that's another technique that you can use if you feel like you need to. So I got my brick all done from top to bottom, um, but that's it. I mean, it took me, I don't know how long, honestly, I didn't even look at the time, uh, but it didn't take long at all. Thankfully, uh, the way the brick fit on this wall, I was able just to break this piece off and transfer it to this piece on this side uh, to make that fit the way it was. So honestly, um, God really blessed me with that, being able to have that perfect forefoot um, now, of course, it's not perfect. I can see some mess ups here wherever the, the line is that meets, but you know what? It's brick, so it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the good thing about it. Um, but I'm very happy with it. Now I have to let this sit for 24 hours completely dry, and then I got to come back and fill all the grout lines with mortar that I have uh, with a mortar bag. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, but that's all I'm going to do today. So let me show you a close up of the wall and how it looks. So, like I said, that's the top of it. Going all the way down, and then there's the bottom. Um, like I said, the Lord really blessed me with it. That bottom piece there, I thought I was going to have to cut, 
but actually that fit perfectly the way it was. So if you make a wall four foot by eight foot and you buy this exact same brick, then you know what? It's gonna be super easy for you, super simple uh, to put it in. You won't have to make a lot of cuts or a lot of adjustments. So it made it really easy. Um, again, I'm excited to see the finished product once I'm done and I'm able to grout all the lines, the sides of it and do some touch up on the paint. But that's kind of where I'm at for right now. Um, but again, we'll zoom forward in time in about 24 hours and I'll show you doing the grout. Okay, now that it's been about 24 hours, it's a little less than, uh, but I checked and everything is pretty well dry behind the brick. Uh, so now I've got to put the mortar in between the brick um, now what you want to use is type S mortar. That's what I got. Uh, one thing I learned while mixing is be very, uh, cautious with how much water you put into it. Uh, the ratio is quite little with water versus the mortar. Otherwise it'll become really runny. Um, and you want that right consistency so it could stay, um, in your grout lines of your brick. Um, and of course you're going to want to get this like pastry bag basically for the mortar, uh, to put in between the, the brick lines. Uh, I already did a little bit of it trying to test it out as you can tell here just so I know what I'm doing <laughs> um, and I'm going to bring you a little bit closer just kind of show you how it's done um, with this mortar and how it's going to fill it in. This is a good one um, as you can tell some of these bricks are a little crooked uh, here but you know what it's brick so um, basically what you do is you just stick it in and you act like you're piping the wall pretty much you just you're just going to fill in the hole the best you can as you go and I mean it's it's kind of hard um, using a piping bag for mortar but you know you just try to fill in the cracks the best you can as you go so I'm going to do a little bit more of it and then I'll show you as I get further along because as I can tell this is going to take quite a bit of time to do. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got done piping uh, the mortar into the brick and just let you know, that's the hardest part of it. Uh, cutting the wall, putting the stuff up, putting the brick on, that was easy. Piping this stuff, now that, that was hard. It kills the arms and the, the grip, especially doing this much of it. Um, but now that I have it all mortared in, I'm gonna go through and I've gotta wait about 15 minutes to let it dry um, and then I knock off the excess. Uh, now I'm, I'm the kind of guy that I like to have the right tool for the right job. Uh, but in this instance, I did not do that. Um, I purchased something that I thought would work. It does work, but it's not 
perfect for what I need it to do. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to use what I have and how to make it work. It's a little extra work. Um, there is a, a brick grout tool that you can buy that fits right in the grooves of these. And it's just a perfect depth to knock all the excess grout off and leave a nice smooth line in there. Um, so if you want to go to Home Depot, buy that, it would probably be very beneficial. Um, if I would have known that I would have had it cause I think it's only like 10, 15 bucks. So it would have been worth it. Uh, but now I'm going to show you the process of knocking the access off, um, and also cleaning up the brick, making it look good. So like I said, um, I'm using a grout float. So that's just what I had or what I purchased. Um, so, you know, if you've ever done tile, kind of the same way you just want to scrape you know the excess off and let it just kind of crumble down so you just kind of float it around kind of push up and down fair warning it does make a huge mess in your house so um, if you don't like mess make sure you clear the area and, and able to clean up and sweep up after Now for these edges, as you can tell, it looks kind of rough and nasty here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and pretty much, once this all dries really well, I'm going to come and probably knock a lot of this excess off. Now I got most of this uh, knocked off. I just come through, I have a rough leather glove, and I just kind of go in the middle, you know, to kind of get that nice finished look on the grout, the mortar lines in there. Because like I said, if you had that tool, that tool would pretty much do this part for you. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. So then you get it all nice and finished like such. And I wanna do the rest of the wall uh, here in a little bit and I'll show you the finish. But that's what I've been doing to make my grout lines look nice. Um, as you can tell the difference between here and up here. It looks totally different once you're able to kind of get in there and work it yourself uh, it's a little annoying but you know what again my fault for not buying the right tool so now I gotta use a little bit of extra manpower and time to get this done but you know what at the end of the day it's gonna look nice it'll work and so on so you're able to work it like that now, once you get it to this state, you let it dry a little bit longer, probably about another five to 10, you can probably even do 15 minutes. And you come back with a wet sponge, you wipe it again, try to get all this excess stuff that's still on here off. And you just continue with that uh, over and over again. And I'll show you washing it with the sponge. So as I was saying, um, I've let this part of the wall, as you can tell, dry already. Um, so I'm just going to take a wet sponge and all you do is just kind of wipe the brick with it, kind of clean it up as you go. And depending on how it is, you know, you can come off and you see the sponge is kind of clean. You can flip it and continue just to, to wipe the wall the best you can. Now you may have to come back and do it a few more times. You know, however much you would like to until you get the look, you know, cleaned off and smooth as you want. But you, know, you just go through and you rinse the sponge off a little more. And you just keep wiping as you go to make it look nice and pretty when it's, it's done. There you go. So I'm going to continuously do this over the rest of the wall as it dries. And then I'll show you 
the finished product. All right, so um, I still got a little bit of cleaning to do on these top bricks, the bottom bricks. I've washed about two or three times now with the, the uh, sponge. I'm allowing these to dry out a little more before I do the first scrub on them. Um, but that's all I have left to do on the brick. Um, like I said, I got the brick all washed and everything. So this is what it's going to look like when it's completely done. Uh, the mortar still has a little bit time to dry. Um, again, it says that 24 hour period, so I'm giving it that. Uh, but this is basically how it's going to look. Um, so this is going to conclude part one of this video because uh, we still have to install the stove that we have here plus the piping and everything to go out like I was talking about in the beginning of the video. We didn't want to make this video too long, so we're going to cut it into part one, part two. So this part is for the brick wall. Um, again, thank y'all so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We love each and every one of y'all. We pray for y'all and God bless y'all. Have a wonderful day.